Yeah, so, but there's a, it's almost like a continuum that w- we find ourselves on, and these folks on the dark triad side are much more skewed to one end. Well, in one of, some of the research would suggest that, particularly moving to folks who are, um, who, uh, who are active predators, serial killers, people who, who, who kill people uh, periodically, um, this may have a, a much larger biological basis that they're so it, it may be that most of us have a continuum but some folks are so skewed in one direction right. and it may reflect you know that it literally may reflect a um, um, a genetic poisoning of sorts you know right so, right. so yeah we're, we're talking about um, personality categories uh, a lot of this comes from the DSM, and the, these psychologists are writing about it. But but the m- notion is that it's lifelong. So there's something uh, ver- at the very beginning of a person's mm-hmm. life that is sort of seen attachment disturbance, time. Right. Uh, you know, developmental uh, um, disruption. You, you think about it like either. Um, Heinz Kowat, who's sort of the father of self psychology, talks about that there's a healthy narcissism. But we have to have the right sort of developmental experiences to be able to um, to develop that. You know, a healthy not narcissism is the ability to be affirmed in all sorts of ways. But an unhealthy narcissism at its extreme is one only sense has a sense of affirmation under total control of the object. Oh, okay. And that uh, there is the threat of annihilation without that control. So all of us experience narcissistic disturbances, like um, you know. Um, when you told me I looked fat in this sweater when I first came in. Right, I did say like, that, right. That, uh, Are you going to eat that banana? Yeah, that's uh, right, yeah. Like? <laughs> you orangutan, you. And uh, you said that. And, um, I don't remember saying that, but I said some things. Yeah, sure. So it, at that moment, of uh, that would generate a narcissist dis- disequilibrium. And so if you have um, healthy coping styles, which have both genetic, biological, but also strong developmental and a learning element to them, then when you said that to me, theoretically, if you said it to me, and what I would do with that. And if I would allow myself to register some form of discomfort, acknowledging my disequilibrium, right. then I could say quietly to myself in my head, wait a minute, you know, uh, I don't think that's the sweater's that bad. Whatever I could do to be able to navigate right. that. Almost defend that's yourself healthy. to this point. Or yeah. I could, you know, say, wait a minute, you know, that really hurt my feelings. Why would you say it? And then you might help me to regulate by right. saying, you know, either hopefully you would say, you know, I'm sorry, I wasn't, I was just joking, or you could make it worse by saying, yeah, you disgust me or something. Yeah. But on the extreme of inability to cope, there becomes um, some form of narcissistic rage. I might be hurt by that not directly acknowledge it but then slowly but surely find some way to subtly undermine you and i might you know mm-hmm. like i might you know start making come, comments about back, back. yeah yeah like oh, you wait, call don't, that don't a camera to... <laughs> <laughs> you know all right now that that really hurts <laughs> yeah. all right let's take that back i can't See? defend against that it's probably true but but it's <clears> in <throat> the idea of control over another person <clears throat> to a certain extent well, right as we get further down that 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 into the the less uh, healthy coping styles. Yeah, the dark track. Then it can become overt control, and then it could become a form of um, underneath that narcissistic rage is is almost a, a throttling of the object, and uh, that can be subtle or not so subtle. I mean, um, from keeping someone in a cage so they'll never leave. I mean, that would be right, you know. Yeah. But but you'll notice that at its core is all that, yeah. something all of us have to deal with: how to maintain that equilibrium. Right. And we talk about this notion of Machiavellianism. And once again, there's an element of this that um, we need to know how to to be able to um, assert ourselves, how to be able to move in the world interpersonally in a way that is empowering. And so, again, there's a scale there, too. Right. You, you have to, you know, um, um, if on Valentine's Day you buy your spouse something really nice because you want them to potentially have sex with you that night – There is something Machiavellian in that. 